Good day everybody, my name is Todd Stanley. I'm the man who takes people out into the field and has either live interact with their eyewitness Sasquatch. This is my Throwback Thursday video. I'm going to talk about something today, a topic very important to me. I've been studying gorillas for years, maybe even a decade. I find that gorillas in nature, I've learned so much from them in comparison with the Sasquatch. So I'm going to go over a bunch of comparisons I've made and things that I've learned over the years of actually live interacting with gorillas and, and in some cases touching gorillas at the at the the zoos that I've worked with. I've never been to Africa, but I work with primatologists that have been to Africa. I cooperate with them and I've seen not wild gorillas but uh, zooed gorillas and their behaviors, their size, their power has taught me so much so I'm going to go through that comparison today. It's, today it's Bigfoot versus the gorilla in all the things I've been able to, to eyewitness with Sasquatch, to eyewitness with gorillas and to make those comparison theories but most importantly with boots on the ground, hands-on experience. So let's go through that today we're going to have some fun. The masters of civilization, my people, sure could learn a lot from the masters of the wilderness which is who they are. There's no way that you got sight of a Sasquatch in those areas with those tree breaks, with those tracks, getting those apples taken, with those sounds, all these things. Right into some gorilla footage I have. So here's some some video of me years ago, back when I had a beard and a uh, little bit different hairdo. I'm going behind the scenes now. Where I went, uh, this is Kakanga. He's a silverback gorilla, uh, a wonderful gorilla. You can see me here feeding him a carrot. Uh, I learned my goodness so much from him. So he was. This is Kakanga. He's the dominant male, formerly at the, this zoo. Now you can see as I'm behind the scenes, where I'm really interacting with him. I'm, he's he's interacting with me. You can see his incredible, monstrous hands right there. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Even even looking at uh, look at the way the fingers are. Look at the way people ask me a lot about the fingernails of Sasquatch, and I'll tell you that's what the fingernails of a Sasquatch look like. As I've seen, they're really dark black like that. The fingers are extremely similar, and of course, uh, a big difference obviously between a Sasquatch and a gorilla though is the overall size. From what I've seen of what Kakanga was capable of, which is immense and extraordinary. He is only half as tall as a Sasquatch, and his to overall weight, as, as enormous as he is, is only 400 pounds. Whereas I've witnessed with Sasquatch, literally up in the areas of over 9 feet tall, and clearly over 900 pounds. There you get a good look at the uh, the fingernails very clearly. That's That's what I've seen in Sasquatch and uh, fingernails are black even the way I don't know what he does to keep his nails nice and short because obviously they're growing whether he chews them or scratches them down but uh, a tremendous amount I learned from Kakanga so here's a set of skulls um, c comparatively speaking I'm gonna say that Sasquatch there you see a gorilla skull obviously the biggest one of the group uh, the large sharp canines I have not witnessed that with Sasquatch but uh, one thing I see extreme similarities with is the hands. So the hands of a Sasquatch, my goodness, are absolutely enormous. And as you can see, it's very much the same here. In fact, I would say the hand size, surprisingly enough, between a Sasquatch and a gorilla are not tremendously significant. Here I'm holding, this is, this is what I'm very convinced is a handprint I received from Jeff Meldrum of a Sasquatch. Now we're not sure the age of this individual. I'm gonna speculate that it's not likely either, a, it's not likely a fully grown male, but as you can see, this finger imprint is not significantly larger than that gorilla. And I, I would think in, in my experience, I'm gonna say this is probably a male. And I think he is about, just again, judging by what I've seen from the tracks, with hand prints, hand power, I would think this is a, probably a, a 14 or 15 year old male Sasquatch. So I would say a male Sasquatch from what I've seen and have experienced in real life is about 1.5 times as large as this. So pretty big hands, but not enormously larger than a gorilla like you would think. I can't say 
that I can have a com relative comparison of power in hand power because gorillas are so good at climbing and their hands are so enormous and they're they walk in a special way because their quadrupeds are not truly bipedal like Sasquatch and human beings are but uh, I don't have enough information really but even just speculating I would think that a Sasquatch doesn't have an enormous hand strength advantage over a gorilla because they're so that primate power but but that's not the case with the body and the legs the arms the chest I I'm very convinced what I've seen with the tree breaks and the structures that the Sasquatch make that that they are not a gorilla is not capable of making the breaks that I've seen and a gorilla is not capable of the power that I've seen tearing trees out and whatnot and uh, that says a lot so I say this quite often and I stand right behind this I'm firmly convinced that a Sasquatch is not only more than twice as large as a gorilla but even likely more than twice as strong as a gorilla and it's it's been demonstrated to me over and over and over again so here we see a really nice shot of uh, Kakanga walking away, clearly quadrupedal, unlike a Sasquatch being bipedal, but the muscularity, uh, the, the power, the, the hair, as opposed to fur, that are just like uh, gorillas and Sasquatch. And here you see that gorillas drink, they have a specialty drinking device because they're highly intelligent, very easy to teach and, and train and work with according to the, the zookeepers that I've met and the primatologists that I know. But things like Gorillas in the wild don't make tree breaks, especially like Sasquatch do, an intelligent tree break that's directional. Here's a female, uh, obviously much smaller than the male, and uh, the, the observation of sexual dimorphism, which means the males are larger than the females, increases the likelihood of being a, a male-dominated society, and Kakanga dominates his females to the point where they are very, very well-kept, uh, to the point where almost in an abusive sort of fashion. But we were allowed to have incredible interactions. As you can see here, the, with the female actually would reach out to us and touch us, but only a specific female. Something else I learned about gorillas, which is similar with Sasquatches, some of them will come up to you, some will be nice, some of them you can, you can interact with. And then another one comes along and she'll tear your arm off and beat you to death with it. And that was something that the primatologist made very clear to us that, uh, you know, there's particular individuals you can touch, particular individuals that will interact with you, and particular individuals that are just violent and will kill you. And that's just different personality traits. And you see that in even dog species, right? So as you can see, so here I'm having, the, uh, having time to uh, feed the female, which was a really cool experience. Um, she was absolutely amazing. Really reminds me of a, uh, a female that I filmed in video four that uh, I call Jane, just in the fact that she has less of a sagittal crest, uh, less muscularity, less, less body hair, in fact. So really tremendous similarities across the board from, from female to female. So, and uh, you'll see that she's always, she's, she still has absolutely enormous hands, which is really, really cool. And, uh, but not nearly the body strength, not nearly the body power and uh, very feminine interactions. I find female dogs, female horses, female gorillas, and I'm assuming also female Sasquatch really have that tendency to be gentle and more nurturing, but, but also kind of off in the back. I generally have more interactions with the, with the males than females because females are, uh, you know, timid. Like, as you can see, she's always looking back, making sure it's okay with Kakanga that she takes the carrot. I think it's in a female's nature to be less outgoing and for boys to be a little more adventurous. Here's one of the many things I learned that was really, really a big game changer for me. So, uh, Kakanga, as you're watching this next video, you're going to hear him do a little, a little growl. So when I'd be feeding him, giving him a carrot, um, he'd make this sound that was very profound even seemed kind of intimidating but he wasn't trying to be like that he was just, he was his way of saying hey I, I'd, I'd like a carrot and after almost a month or two after having that experience with him I was out in Montana and I was uh, interacting with a, a young male and I went out and I, I'd given him some apples and then he came back and he was interacting with me off in the distance and I remember uh, so I followed all the rules, I was interacting with him very successfully, and he was playing with me. And I, that's something I see with the gorillas, I see with chimpanzees, I see it with people, I see it with wolves, and I see it with Sasquatch, is that ability and need to play, which is really, really important and something that my team and I are working on uh, diligently to try to take it to the next level and try to get the Sasquatch to find a way to interact and play with us. But anyways, I was out 
and I had this apple and I put the apple in the air and, and I could hear the Sasquatch scratching trees and running around. This particular individual was very excited to get that apple from me. And then off in the distance, in a different direction, I heard a deep <laughs> And at first it scared me. I was just terrified to hear that deep growling, booming sound. But I stopped and remembered how Kakanga did the exact same thing when he wanted a carrot from me. So I literally stopped interacting with, with what I perceived as the younger male who was actually only a 15 inch track. And I went over to an area where I found the larger 17 inch track. And I went and I put that apple up on a spot in the tree. And as I retreated away from it, I heard the boom, 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 boom. And he went and he grabbed that apple and took it. And uh, I was, at the time, and as I am most of the time, especially now, I know you're thinking, why didn't you get footage when you film it? Well, I, I filmed the tracks, I filmed shadowy figures. Uh, I don't even know where that footage is anymore. It doesn't matter. What matters is that that tremendous lesson I learned from working with the gorillas and being out there, if I hadn't been taught that by Kakanga, I probably would have been terrified. And I think a lot of people misconceive these big giant primates that are just built to be brutes and powerful. They can't not help being immensely masculine and scary and terrifying. It's not at all times they're doing that. And I think if you're in a situation where you feel a Sasquatch is being simply assertive with you, he's actually, that's their, that's about as gentle as they get. When they're being aggressive and angry uh, and really hostile, there's a point where you, there's a line they cross and it really is, they are angry, they are aggressive and they are very hostile. But with that being said, what I'm trying to teach people is sometimes it's, that's simply not the case as you here with Kakanga here. And uh, so what I'm gonna do here too is I'm gonna show Kakanga's growl a couple times. So I'll play it first uh, just as I recorded it and then I'll play it turned up. But I want you to listen afterwards. I'm gonna play some older footage of mine where these Sasquatch are surrounding me. So I'm holding a flare and the flare is burning and you can hear some Sasquatch growling in the background. And I want you to listen to the exceptional similarities. This, and I'd filmed the, the, the flare incident that I had that's on Survivor Man in my movie. I'd filmed that long before I started uh, interacting with gorillas and learning about gorillas and now that I look back at the similarities between even that the Sasquatch kind of make like a, like a chainsaw deep uh, gorilla sound that's far more similar than distinctly different so have a listen to that and uh, I'll play that for you right now. We have two males there. We have the king pack. There. in all the research and all the work that I've done, my biggest asset, the biggest similarities I've seen between uh, orangutans, chimpanzees, gorillas, is gorillas and, and, uh, and Sasquatch. I've heard, I've heard uh, Sasquatch make sounds similar to chimpanzees, but not much, I mean, other similarities, but nothing nearly as significant as what I've learned from working with the primatologists that are specifically trained to work with gorillas, reading about gorillas, studying gorillas, and that's what I recommend more than anything, it seems to me that the, the, the best way to learn about a Sasquatch is to understand wilderness is number one, understand what it means to be wild, understand Native American culture, uh, people that were closer to wilderness, like the First Nations people and Native Americans. And then secondly, again, it's that combination of they're a lot like gorillas and a lot like, uh, they have a lot of similarities between what Native people did back in the day. So anyways, let's get back to watching some more, sa some of this uh, gorilla footage. This is a, a wonderful female that was uh, always playing and interacting with us. See, we're trying to get her to play and get her excited about playing, which was wonderful. You can see again her, her black fingernails, her enormous large hands, very, very powerful, excellent for climbing. But uh, an advantage that a gorilla has is they have uh, the ability to grasp their feet and a Sasquatch wouldn't have that advantage. So as you can see here, Although Sasquatch are excellent climbers, they may very well be second to gorillas, just considering the 
the the opposable thumb that they have on their feet but uh man i see sasquatch climbing and it's it's amazing and fantastic and they do an excellent job especially in their youths and that's something to recognize as kakanga comes you don't see him up there much because he's big and heavy he can climb but he chooses to stay on the ground and why not uh he doesn't really have much to fear from predation uh, he's a big dominant male in his in his group. He's a big dominant male out in the in the wild where he's from, and that would certainly also be this case with Sasquatch. But uh, other things that you never see gorillas do—they don't make tree structures. Um, they're not trackers. They don't hunt. Uh, something really really important that the Sasquatch do that really puts them at another level, though, more than anything, <coughs> is they clearly hide their tracks. I have evidence to show that, and they are not trackers and they don't survive in extreme cold like the Sasquatch do. And all these things are going to make for an intelligent, more evolved species. But uh, other things that I've learned, similarities between Sasquatch and gorillas though, is in gorillas, uh, they're, they smell extremely similar. Um, they, when, they're, when a gorilla is upset, they have a tendency to uh, excrete smells. Not only, not only is the smell of a gorilla very similar to a Sasquatch, but the way they excrete it. And what, what I'm saying with that is, I can actually smell if a Sasquatch is acutely angry at me, so he's angry at me in the moment, or if he's been smelling for a long time, he's going around, he's kind of cranky, he's kind of pissed off. And, so, and, and a Sasquatch might be doing that in the case of, of where he's a, a male looking for females or just, just extendedly upset and angry about a certain situation so i noticed that with the gorillas as well something you might find amazing that was great for me too was uh gorillas and sasquatch have similar what i would call uh beating you up tactics so i've i've been told by other primatologists that gorillas have a tendency to use like hammer fists and they bite you and that's exactly what a sasquatch did or what Sasquatch have done to me is uh, even even a piece of advice I've had from a world famous primatologist that I've worked with. Um, I was I was bit by a Sasquatch when, so they were picking on me and throwing me around like gorillas do to people, and kind of you know beating my ass, giving me hammer fists, displaying their dominance over me. And uh, there was a time where one particular Sasquatch bit my leg. And I remember he was biting it. And as he was biting down, it was extreme pain. And I tried not to yell, but I noticed that eventually I did yell because it was just getting so painful. He was literally just crushing my calf muscle. And uh, as soon as I screamed, he let go. And the primatologist told me that's exactly the way gorillas do it. He said, we actually have a thing where so they'll bite you and they'll start making more and more pressure. And he says, the sooner you scream, the more likely they are to let you go. They just want to make sure that you're in pain and you understand the power that they have. So the next time I get my ass bit by a Sasquatch, I'll make sure to scream first and not try to play tough guy. So that's my Throwback Thursday video. I uh, just wanted to show my extreme appreciation and also something to learn from, from gorillas too that I really think is appropriate and amazing with important with Sasquatch is people support gorilla research and uh, the people that work with me and support this research we are about the discovery of Sasquatch that's why my movie is called discovering Sasquatch and uh, or discovering Bigfoot sorry and uh, so if you want to if you want to support that if that matters to you I am a full-time Sasquatch researcher. I have a Patreon account and just keep watching my videos, keep sharing my videos, share my movie. It's up on YouTube now. It's been on Netflix. It did the whole QuickTime, Amazon, Prime, full run. It did really, really well. And I've, I've made sure that it's still out there, that it's accessible to people because it's a very important movie that talks about the discovery and what we are working towards. So thank you very much for tuning in. As always, there'll be a, a Sasquatch Sunday video. I'll be live on Wednesday and much, much more information to come. Don't miss this Sasquatch Sunday this week. It's going to be an amazing one. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much for tuning in and I'll, I'll see you soon.